Hello everyone, this is Daniel with fitnessboner.com. Today we're going to be doing an upper body strength training routine. We're going to be doing this in two different groups. Our first group is going to have four different exercises. We're going back and forth with two exercises at a time, so an ABAB pattern, three sets through for each exercise. So we need uh, dumbbells for this, and I'm going to be using a bench, and a bench that has a little bit of an incline. So if you have a bench, even if it's a flat bench, that is perfectly fine. Uh, if you don't have a bench at all, you can actually do most of these exercises either just laying on the ground or standing. So you don't necessarily absolutely have to have one. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with our warm-up. Alright everyone, let's go ahead and get started with our warm-up here. We're going to be doing each one of these for 30 seconds apiece. Start my timer. Our first exercise is going to be just a shoulder roll, so nothing too fancy yet. Remember, we're doing upper body, so we want to warm up those upper body muscles quite a bit. So kind of pinch those shoulders forward, up and over, pause the bottom, and then roll them back the opposite direction. It's a nice, slow, controlled motion. Really try to focus on range of motion more than anything else. You want to really wake up those muscles. Right, side step arm cross neck, so just nice and slow back and forth. Use those chest muscles and upper back muscles to kind of just squeeze against one another, pulling those arms back and forth. Again, focusing on range of motion. Try to get a good stretch as you come back, then cross it all the way over top of your chest as far as you can in the front. Alright, doing toe touch sweeps next. So down, across, kind of lean back just a little bit away from the direction you came, and then back down, opposite side. Trying to warm up that torso a little bit. Only stretch down as far as is comfortable. Don't push it too far. You want to keep those legs pretty much straight, just slightly soft. And let it relax. All right, next one's going to be a high knee with a rotation. So one knee comes up, rotate towards that knee, and do the same thing off to the other side, just nice and slow, back and forth. Use those core muscles to really contract and squeeze tight as you rotate. Same thing with that knee. You're trying to get that knee up as high as you can. Focus on that range of motion. Arm circles in front. So hands straight out in front of you. We're gonna do a nice big circle. We're gonna switch about halfway. So keep your eye on that timer. When you get about to 15 seconds left, we're gonna switch directions. So this is just warming up those deltoids, the, the top of that shoulder. Switch directions. Keep those lungs open. And let it relax. We'll do a squat push pull. So those feet, just a little wider than shoulder width, both feet facing pretty much straight forward, slightly out. You're going to squat down, press those arms out in front of you, and as you come up, squeeze them back. And you're working against yourself as hard as you can. So as you push, you're really using that tricep as well as your bicep to work against. As you pull in, that bicep comes in. As you push out, that chest contracts. As you pull in, let those rhomboids, that upper back, work a little harder. So press it out, squeeze it back. All right, we're going to do kind of a similar thing, but this time with a sumo squat. So feet out really nice and wide. You're going to squat down, and as you come up, those hands come up over your head. As you come down, pull them down. You're going to be working against yourself. So as you pull up, those deltoids, the top of that shoulder is kind of winning. As you pull down, those lats underside is kind of winning. So just back and forth. Just keep those lungs open. All right, we're going to switch to a boxer shuffle. Just come up onto those toes. Those ankles kind of warm up a little bit. We're not really going to be using our legs much today, but you are going to use them for support and for overall balance, so you need to get those warmed up as well. All right, about 10 seconds left, and then we're going to move into fly jacks. So those arms are staying level with the ground right in front of you. 
All right, feet together, arms in front. As your feet come out, your arms come out. Just move at whatever pace is comfortable for you, as long as you can control that motion. Keep it going. And we're switching to jumping jacks. So overhead, keep those arms pretty much rigid. Don't let your elbows bend. The arm pretty much all the way straight. Keep that shoulder contracted. Everything under control all the time. Those lungs open. And let it relax. All right, take a few deep breaths. If you need to, go ahead and get your uh, dumbbell set up. Grab your bench if you have one. We'll go ahead and start into that strength here in just a second. All right, everybody, I've got my uh, dumbbells and my bench set up. Like I said, if you don't have an incline bench, that's fine. You're just gonna do a traditional flat chest fly for this first exercise. I'm gonna be doing a incline fly. So we're just gonna use uh, just the same exact motion, just at a slight incline. So if you have an incline bench, by all means use that. If not, flat bench is fine. Uh, I've got my dumbbell set up here. I'm gonna be starting off with a pretty light amount of weight just to make sure my form is nice and clean. We're doing this three sets through so you can always increase weight or decrease weight uh, per set as you need to. All right, so our first two exercises are gonna be an incline chest fly and a reverse fly, so let me get my Timer started here. Uh, I'm gonna be starting off with just 15 pounds per hand for this chest fly. Uh, again, if you're using a flat bench, just lay flat back down on the bench. Same exact motion applies. You're just gonna be at an incline or flat. So start with those hands right above your head. Arms are slightly bent. Drop them out to the side as low as is comfortable. And right back up over top of that chest. Keep that range of motion as full as you can, so drop that weight if you need to, if you feel like you're having to limit that range of motion. And make sure that you're moving really nice and slow and under control. This is not a momentum game. A lot of guys have a tendency to try to lift as much weight as they can and they start having to use momentum to kind of swing the weight around. You're getting a lot more muscle development if you move slowly. Just take your time. And let that one relax. We're gonna to switch to a reverse fly next. So I'm gonna drop the top. My handles are just 10 pounds, so that's what I'm gonna be using for my reverse fly. This one, uh, knees are slightly bent, a little wider than shoulder width apart. Bend straight over with a flat back, and then arms come up and out to the side. Nice slow drop on the way down. So up and out and back down. Try to keep that back as flat as you possibly can the entire time. No rounding your back. Again, if you feel like you're having to limit your range of motion, then you're gonna need to drop that weight. It's more important to get full range of motion and build strength for that entire range than it is to lift heavier. Just keep those lungs open. Nice, slow, controlled motion. That relax. All right, moving back to that chest fly. All right, hands over top of those shoulders. Slight bend in that elbow, palms facing towards one another. Out to the side and back up. Keep those lungs open, no holding your breath. Especially as you start using weight that's really heavy. You have a tendency to do what's called the Valsalva Maneuver, which is to hold your breath, which makes your chest a little bit more rigid, makes your core a little more rigid, and helps a little bit more for that lift. But if you can, to increase your strength in your core and your overall ability, try to do it any lifting without the Valsalva Maneuver, without holding your breath. Because it's technically a little bit of a cheat. And let it relax. Going back to that reverse fly. 
This is a traditional strength routine, so we're doing three sets through, so it's not fast. This is not a real quick, fun uh, routine. This is all about concentration and focusing on that form. Making sure you're pushing your body to its max as far as how much you can lift while still keeping clean form and full range of motion. Ten seconds left. Keep it under control. One more. Relax. All right, back to the incline fly. Hands above that chest. Start up. And I know if you don't have adjustable dumbbells like I do. The breaks in between are have to be a little bit longer moving from exercise to exercise to select the right weight unless you have a really big selection of dumbbells to choose from. So don't worry about it. The faster you go in between exercises just makes this actually turn into a little bit of a cardio routine. So if you're moving slower, it just means you're going to be focusing more on that strength. So don't worry about it. Just hit pause if you need to. Focus on that form. Nice slow controlled motion. Alright, one more round. That reverse fly. That second round was that uh, second set was getting a little a little sloppy, so we'll see how this third one goes. Alright, flat back. So your goal. When you're trying to build muscle or build strength, is to make sure that those last few repetitions on that last set are almost impossible to do with clean form. You're getting to the point where your muscles are just trying to give out on you because you've gotten them that tired. That's the only time when you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna start ripping those muscle fibers a little bit. And that is what causes your muscles to get bigger and stronger. Kind of think of it as breaking a bone. If you break a bone, it heals back thicker and stronger to try to make sure it doesn't break again. Your muscles kind of work in the same way. All right, let it relax. Okay, we're gonna take a, just a short little break here. We're gonna set up for our next two exercises, which is going to be a lateral dumbbell pullover, left side and right, so we're doing sides independently. So I'm gonna drop my bench back out flat. And I'm gonna change my weight. I'm gonna to move to seven and a half pounds per hand. So my kettle, or my dumbbell set, I actually have little extra slugs in here. Each one of these is two and a half pounds. So I'm gonna take one out, takes a 10 pound dumbbell, drops it down to seven and a half. All right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start back in. This time we're gonna lay on your side. This is gonna be a little bit of an awkward position. But it's the best way to get into that lat from the side using a dumbbell. So one leg in front to help you support, other leg tucked up out of the way. You're just going to drop that hand up over your head, back up, and pause directly above that shoulder. Don't pull it any further, fat, uh, further over your body than that. Anything past that, you're actually going to start using your deltoid as opposed to your lat. Nice slow controlled motion, trying to keep that arm Straight as you can, a little bit of bend that elbow is perfectly fine, but I don't want to see anything like this. If you get a real big bend, then you're not doing the exercise properly anymore. You're actually making it a lot easier. So make sure that arm is extended out as straight as you can control. Make sure those shoulders and hips are perpendicular to the ground. Now let it relax. All right, we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm gonna switch sides of my bench here hand directly above that shoulder, shoulders perpendicular to the ground. Drop that hand over top of your head. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> Got just enough room without hitting my bench there. OK, 
Keep your lungs open. Again, keep that arm as straight as you possibly can. If you feel as though you just can't keep that arm straight, drop your weight. It's all about keeping clean form. We're trying to do these motions without cheating in any way, shape, or form as best you can for as long as you can. And you want to use a weight that is really challenging to be able to do that with. Like I said, that last few rep repetitions on that third set should be pretty much giving out. All right, let that relax. Whoop. I'm going to switch back over to the other side. Again, if you can do this just laying on the ground, you don't even necessarily need a bench for this. Drop over top of your head. Back up over top of that shoulder. Shoulders perpendicular to the ground. Trying to keep that arm as straight as you can. Keep those lungs open. Starting to get a nice lactic acid burn in that shoulder. Oh, even though the muscle on your lat is on your kind of more on your back, you're gonna feel a lot of supporting muscles to that deltoid, to those rotator cuffs having to work hard. So you might feel a little bit of muscle fatigue in there as well. Alright, back to the other side. And directly above that shoulder. And drop it over your head. And remember, the weight that I'm using is just an example of what I'm doing right now. Don't use it as a personal example of what you should be doing. You might be a lot less, you might be a lot more. It completely depends on your own personal strength. So do what feels comfortable for you. Focus on that form. Lungs open. And let it relax. We've got one more on each side. And then we're going to get a little bit of a water break. All right, so out on your side. Again, hand up over top of your shoulder. And start up. Hand over your head. And back up over top of that shoulder. Take your time, nice slow controlled movements. Don't worry about rushing this at all. You want to try to keep everything under control. We're trying to avoid using momentum with these movements, so that's why we're going nice and slow to make your muscles have to work through that entire range. There's no coasting. All right, same thing on the other side. Got one more side. And right above that shoulder. And start it up. Focus on that form. If you're starting to get some muscle fatigue, Try to make sure that as long as it's not suffering, or your form's not suffering, just try to push through as long as you can. If you're starting to feel straight up pain, then you need to back off. But if you're just feeling a little bit of lactic acid burn, just keep going for it if you can. And let it relax. All right, that is our first break. So go drive, grab a drink of water. We'll be back to finish the second half of this. See you in just a second.
All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to be doing our second half. Uh, it's going to be kind of set up exactly the same as we did the first half. So we have two different exercises to start off with. We're doing a lateral raise and an incline curl or a recline curl. So I'm going to be using my incline bench again. If you don't have it, then you're just going to sit perfectly straight up and down or stand for your curl, okay? So first one is going to be a lateral raise. Let me get my timer started here. So I'm going to be doing five pounds per hand, so I've removed all the slugs from inside my dumbbells. So the handle by itself is just five pounds. So you stand with your feet about shoulder width apart, nice and straight and tall. Palms facing down the entire time. You're going to lift those arms up and out to the side, just as high as is comfortable, and then nice and slow back down. Slowly up and back down. Just keep those lungs open. If you want to, you can even do this seated, just as long as you have full range of motion. Keep your spine nice and neutral. Try not to tilt your chest back as you start getting tired. Keep those motions at uh, same pace on the way up as the way down. No fast drops. You do most of the effort trying to get up, your body's going to want to just drop those hands. Don't let it. Right, we're gonna let that last uh, relax. We're gonna do a uh, excuse me, a, an incline curl next. So I'm gonna bump up my weight. I'm doing 15 pounds per hand. So again, if you're doing a regular, if you don't have an incline bench, you're just gonna uh, do it seated straight up and down. Otherwise, lay back. Let your arms go all the way back behind you as far as is comfortable, and then bring those hands straight up to that shoulder, keeping that elbow directly underneath that shoulder as best you can. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Try to give almost no rest to the bottom, so you're not going to stop and just let your arms hang. You want to keep those dumbbells in almost constant motion. It makes those muscles have to work a little bit harder. As you start fatiguing, as those muscles start giving out on you, start getting too much lact lactic acid burn built up, you can just let them pause at the bottom for just a split second as you, as you need. All right, let's go ahead and switch back. Doing that lateral raise again. And remember, if you can't set, uh, reset your dumbbells as quickly as I can, just hit pause. Take all the time you need. All right, palms facing in towards those legs. Straight up as high as is comfortable. And back down. Ooh, gotta make sure you're Bring those arms up the same level too. That's why having a mirror is handy. So you can see what your form is like to make sure you're matching left side to right side. Because often your body will think you're level and you're not even close. Let that relax, go back to that dumbbell curl. Again, seated straight up and down if you're doing just a regular curl. Otherwise, lean back if you can. Elbows straight underneath that shoulder. I'm doing that curl from there. Palms facing forward. Nice slow controlled motion. As you get more and more tired, you're going to have a tendency to want to pull that elbow forward. So as you come up, you're going to want to kind of lift it forward like, like this. You're just cheating there. All you're doing is bringing, your, uh, bringing the, the work from your bicep to your deltoid. So we want to keep those elbows back so your deltoid doesn't get involved and it's all 100% bicep through that whole range of motion. And let it relax. Great. Back to that lateral raise. Just got one more of these and one more of those curls. So stand nice and straight and tall. Arms come straight up out to the sides. Again, try to make sure you're getting as level as possible here. As you can see, I have a tendency to raise my right arm slightly higher than my left. 
And that is because I'm right-handed, so my body's right side dominant. So my entire right side is going to tend to be a little stronger. And you have to work really hard to make sure that you're evenly balanced. So if you're left-handed, it's going to be the left side. Focus, nice controlled motions, nice slow drop. All right, one more of those curls. Back to my 15 pounds. So I probably could have gone a little bit heavier on both of these exercises, but not by much. They're starting to feel like they're wanting to give out on me. So I'm staying at the weight I am. But a little bit more weight might have been a little too much. So if you're gonna do uh, like say one set a little higher weight it's always best to start with the very first set with the higher weight and then drop it down from there if you know exactly what you lift so the more times you do a routine the more you're gonna uh, be really clear on what weights you're gonna need to use for what exercises so if you've never done uh, inclined or reclined curls like this you might notice that you're going to have to use a lot less weight than you would normally do. So don't worry about that. All right, let it relax. Okay, another really short little break. We're going to move into the next exercise, or next two exercises. So we're going to be doing a tricep kickback and a uh, shoulder shrug for the next one. So our tricep kickback is actually going to be with both hands simultaneously. So I'm going to use uh, 10 pounds. I need to Slugs back in here. Now my handle is 10 pounds. All right, and then I'm using 30 for those shrugs. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me set my timer here. So with these tricep kickbacks, you're going to try to get your chest as parallel to the ground as you possibly can. Elbows pulled back so your upper arm is parallel and stuck next to your sides. Just going to tip straight forward. Elbows stay right next to your upper body. And then kick those hands straight back behind you. So make sure, of course, this motion is slow is under control. You don't want to actually literally swing or kick those hands back. It's just going to be a nice slow extension, nice slow drop. Make sure those hands don't come in past that elbow. You're not pulling in. That's going to be a bicep mov mov uh, movement, excuse me. Um, but if you stop at that elbow and then push straight back, it keeps it all on that tricep. Just a few seconds left. And let it relax. All right, we're going to be doing shoulder shrugs next. I'm using 30 pounds per hand for this one. Those uh, shoulders, those uh, latissimus can take quite a bit. So you're going to start with those hands in front, squeeze them up, or those trapezius, I should say, then back down, then back in front. So we're making a little U shape with your hands. So you're going to squeeze up, over, and down. Same thing back forward. So this way we're getting a shoulder shrug through a lot of different ranges of motion. Try to keep that back neutral. Try to keep that head straight above those shoulders. All right, let it relax. All right, back to the tricep kickback. Bent over, elbows to sides. Kick those hands straight back behind you.
Just keep pushing through it. Keep those arms up. Try to keep that motion slow. Take short little breaks if those arms are starting to give out in you. But try to keep them moving constantly if not. Woo! That's a good burn. Ah, sorry, I had to give up a little early on that one. All right, so I'm gonna drop my weight on that uh, next round. Let's get back to the shoulder shrugs. Let's start them up. We're making that U shape. So drop those hands in front, kind of squeeze those shoulders together. Up and over, pinch them back and down. Keep them going. Keep those lungs open. Don't hold your breath. Make sure you're not popping with your feet to get the weight up. It's just a dead, slow pull and very slow drop. And let it relax. All right. Drop a weight out of here. Side. Hopefully, I've got enough time. <laughs> All right. Tricep kickbacks again. This is our last set. Arms to your sides. Kick them back. So I just took an extra two and a half pounds out just to make it a little bit lighter, make it a little easier to do this motion. Again, don't rush through this. As you get more and more tired, you're going to want to speed up. That momentum helps. Try to fight that. That desire to speed up, this nice, slow, controlled motion. Ten seconds left. Try to get one more in there. Wow. Ooh. All right, one more set of those shoulder shrugs. I'm just going to leave this weight just a little lower. Starting back in. Squeeze them up, roll them back, drop them slow. Squeeze them up, roll them back forward, drop them slow. Keep those lungs open. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Focus on that form. Try to keep that spine neutral. Try not to kick your head forward or tuck it back. Don't bend those elbows. Don't pop up on those toes. And let it relax. All right. Take a short little break. Grab another drink of water. We're gonna come back. We're gonna do our cool down and then we'll be done. See you in just a second. All right, everybody. Let's go ahead and do our cool down. Get my timer started here. So, we have got an arm cross stretch for us first. So nice and slow, you're gonna bring your, uh, whichever arm you want up first, grab it across your chest, use the other arm, grab it behind that elbow, pull across, you should feel that stretch across that shoulder blade, maybe into the outside of that shoulder. Just pull it in as close to that chest as possible. Make sure you bring it right up across kind of your collarbone and neck area as opposed to pulling it down across. So up nice and high. Nice deep breath, just let it relax. Same thing on the other side. Bring the other arm up, grab behind that elbow, pull across. Keep it up nice and high. Just a nice long deep breath, try to recover as much oxygen into your system as you can. Relax. All right, bring your left hand over your head. Touch your left shoulder as close to as you can get. Grab that left elbow with your right hand and pull across back behind you as far as is comfortable. If you're not as flexible as me, don't worry about it. You're just looking for a little bit of a stretch. Just hold it there. Just keep 
his lungs open. Keep it a neutral spine as best you can. Same thing on the other side. So right hand to right shoulder, as close as comfortable as you can. Uh, left hand grabs that right elbow and pulls across. Should feel this across that tricep, maybe even down into your torso, just a little bit. Keep those lungs open. Lean into it a little bit if you want to, get a little extra stretch out of it. Let it relax. We're gonna do a wall chest stretch. So go to a wall or a door frame, something like that. Fingers facing back behind you. You're gonna rotate away from that hand, away from that arm, until you feel a, a stretch through your chest. If you're feeling it more in your bicep, then turn your hand or turn your arm so your the inside of your elbow is kind of facing up. That'll be more chest. If you want to feel it in that bicep, then go ahead and rotate that uh, elbow, the inside of that elbow, facing forward. If you want to feel a little bit more through your forearm, through that palm, just lean back on a little bit more. Same thing on the other side, so fingers facing back behind you, hand, shoulder height, rotate away. Rotate that inside elbow to wherever is comfortable for you, and nice and slow, just lean back against it. You should feel a stretch, or you can feel a stretch all the way from the your palm of your hand, up through your forearm, up through your bicep, all the way into your chest if you want. Relax, or you can put both hands up on the wall. Push your chest down in between. Just hold it there for a few seconds. Switch those feet. Alright, moving into toe touch next. So fingers, or sorry, <laughs> feet just about shoulder width apart. Go straight down on those toes. If you want, start with a flat back to really focus on those hamstrings. And then slowly start rounding over forward to get the rest of that back. Alright, just two more stretches to go. up nice and straight and tall. You are going to reach your left hand down towards the ground and lean your head straight away from that uh, shoulder, from that head, or <laughs> from that head. Leaning your head away from your shoulder, uh, stretching that neck. So stretching down, trying to reach towards the ground with that hand, leaning your head the opposite way, you should feel a nice stretch across the outside of your neck. Just hold it there. Same thing on the other side, so reach down with your right hand this time and lean your head away, keeping your gaze straight forward. You're not looking down or up, you want to look straight forward. Feel that stretch to the outside of your neck. Hold it right there. Constantly reaching down towards those toes. Just relax, nice big deep breaths. And let it relax. All right. If you want to do some more stretches, by all means, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, this workout is complete. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye.